With that being said, we're going to get done with these questions. It's the first one of the night, guys. You ready? I need to know if y'all live. Y'all need to pop off the mic. Say y'all ready for this work. Ready. Ready. Yes. Ready. All right. Let's do it. All right. So the first one of the night. A social worker was recently asked to testify in court about a client's treatment. During the hearing, the social worker reveals that some of the information provided is not accurate and could potentially harm the client's case. The social worker is torn between being truthful and being loyal to their client. What should the social worker do? We have remain silent and stick to the inaccurate information to protect their client's case. We have speak up and correct the inaccurate statements despite the potential negative impact on the client's case. We have C, consult with the supervisor or a professional organization to determine the best course of action. All right. Now we are going to start with A. Do we keep it or do we throw it to the birds? What are we doing with it? What are we doing? Throw it out. Throw it out. Okay. B, do we keep it or throw it out? <laughs> keep, it. Keep, it. keep it. Keep it. C, what are we doing with it? Throw it out. Throw it out. Okay. Anybody want to hop off and say why it is B? Not all I want now. Y'all scared? What's going on? Why is it B? Linda? Because you have to tell the truth. Okay. You have to be truthful. Okay. Is one is what I thought of first, and you have to provide the accurate information, the correct information. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate it. Yeah, I concur with um, Miss Linda, and also just thinking about ethics, about dignity and worth of the person. You always have to be honest as a social worker, or you will. Um, you know, face getting sued for, you know, malpractice, not being accurate about um, the client and what goes on. Okay, I like those answers. So y'all ready for the rationale for it? It's from, all right, so I'm gonna give you just my perspective. If I'm looking at this question, it is an ethical question, right? We know that from the gate. So let's start over. A social worker, I know who I am, was recently asked to testify in court about a client's treatment. So now I know what I'm exactly I'm doing in this scenario. And remember, you can highlight on the exam. You want to pull out who you are. You want to pull out what you're doing, especially if it's an ethical question. During the hearing, the social worker realizes that some of the information provided is not accurate, right? And could potentially harm the client's case. Right there is your presenting problem. The social worker is torn between being truthful and being loyal to the client. What should the social worker do first? This is an application question. We know that this is testing something. Now, B is correct. We have a duty to uphold truthfulness and accuracy in all of their professional interactions. So in this scenario, withholding the truth and providing inaccurate information goes against our code of ethics. Right? That's what they were testing. Option A, remain silent, stick to the inaccurate information to protect the client's case. May protect the client's case in the short term, but it's not ethically justifiable. Option C, consult with their supervisor or a professional organization to determine the best course of action. This is also not correct, but in this case, the social worker has a responsibility to act very swiftly to correct the misinformation. So the best course of action in this scenario is to be truthful and provide accurate information while also exploring ways to mitigate any potential harm to the client. So you guys were right on the money about it. Right on the money. 
any questions about that particular one? Was that too easy? Sounds like it might've been too easy for y'all. Do y'all want a harder one? Sure, why not? Oh, Shayla, you're gonna be testing soon. I'm throwing you underneath the chopping block. Yeah. So yeah. give her a lot. She's been through a lot, you guys. <laughs> Um, training with me. She's done very well. So, and I will throw you on the bus, Shayla. Um, her practice score was it just, it. she blew it out of the water. So I think for Shayla, um, she's a not too far from her exam. It's more so her confidence level. Right, Shayla? You I'm picking right. right, Shayla, in front of you 67 right. people. <laughs> no, you're right. It's all good. But you're um, right, though. Yeah. And so usually when people train with me, I, it, it always comes down to the last couple of weeks mindset. Angel Smith says you got it this time. Oh, thank you, Angel. See, look at that. I put you underneath the bus. Plus I'm picking on you because I'm trying to buy time. I'm putting the next, <laughs> I'm putting the next question in the chat. So I'm putting the next question in the chat. Um, I wanted to, Quickly mention, oh, Leandra says you got it. Another one of my my clientele. And Layla says she agrees. So oh, y'all got to pause and chat. I'm trying to put the next question in there. Um, but while you guys got me up here, I'm putting the next one as fast as I can go. And Kimberly says she's cheering for you. What are some other relevant things about mindset that makes this very important when it comes to believing in your own abilities of taking the exam. I think I share with you guys a story where when I took my LCSW exam, I literally changed 40 answers and I missed it by two points. I think I told you guys that, right? Shayla, you remember me telling you that story for the 50 million time. And stop putting stuff in the chat, y'all. <laughs> I'm trying to put the question in there. Um, I really want to encourage you guys to nurture your mind. It's just like planting and watering a plant, right? A plant needs sun to grow. It needs food. It needs water. How, what are you doing to nurture your mindset? Are you, do you pray? Do you write in journal? Do you write your letters behind your name? What do you do? Y'all got quiet on me. I think prayer and positive affirmations every day. And I'm, I'm going to start starting today, May Day. I'm going to write the letters behind my name. And next Monday is my birthday. Yay, happy birthday, girl. Happy birthday. So that means you're not going to be on Clubhouse, right? Oh, I am. <laughs> I sure oh. enough will. <laughs> well, your birthday, though, Shayla. I'm almost done, guys. All right. I'm put this on. But look, you trying to get that work done. But no, Shayla, I'm very proud of you. You've done very, very well. Um, I think for you, um, it's just your nerves. Oh, yes, it is. Right. And thank you. I appreciate all you've done for me. You know, it was, one, it was a long journey, but I made How it. How long were we working together, Shayla? I'm putting the answers in the chat, guys. Just give me a second. How long has it been? I don't Let's know. See. A couple months? Yeah, we started September 27th. And it was on uphill from there. And you have a, I think, I can't remember your score, but it was it was really high. And you talk to some, what should I do next? Uh, review, you're going to be fine. Right. You know, I'm not ready to fly out the nest just yet. You've been so great. Uh, you know. Oh, but it's, I only can give you the tools. You do the rest. Um, but no, I'm very, very proud of you. Um, and just your growth, despite uh, you having a job that has not been the most supportive. I mean, child welfare is is hard um and just to watch you push through despite 
what you've been going through. And I only put Shada out there because life is going to happen when you're studying, right? It's going to happen. Um, it happened for me twice. <laughs> so what I can tell all of you out there as I'm putting the last answer choice in the chat is life is going to happen. Your response is the part that's going to matter the most. Okay, and I'm putting, I think that's it. It says that, oh, one more, putting D in there. Our colleagues. All right, y'all ready for this? Next question is in there. So here we go. A six-year-old male, Jay is bought to a community health clinic by his mother who is concerned about his recent decline in school performance, lack of motivation, and increased irritability at home. During the intake assessment, Jay is guarded and reluctant to share information, but eventually admits to using marijuana daily for the past year. The social worker suspects that Jay may also be struggling with depression. What should the social worker do first? Now, this is an application question, guys. A, provide resources for substance abuse treatment and take an assessment for depression. B, assess J for depression and substance abuse and develop a treatment plan based on the results. C, refer J for counseling services and substance abuse treatment. D, consult with a supervisor or colleague before proceeding. All right, so let's start with A. Do we keep it or do we throw it out? What are we doing? Um, throw it out. Throw it out. Good. B, what are we doing with it? Let's keep that one. I'll keep it for now. Okay, now let's look at C. What are we doing with it? I'm gonna say keep C. Let's keep it. Okay. D, what are we doing with yeah. it? Throw it out. Throw it out. Throw it out. Okay. Now we're stuck between two. We got assess J and I see refer J. What do you think you, what's gonna be the clue here of def, kind of picking between two of these answers? Now this is an application question, guys. So I'm going to pull it apart a little bit to see if that helps because I see people kind of going back and forth in the chat. So let's go through it from beginning to end. Six-year-old male, remember, if there is an age there, there is something that ASWB wants you to know developmentally about this child, right, or teenager. He's brought to a community health clinic by his mother who is concerned about his recent decline in performance, lack of motivation, and increased irritability at home. So now we have his symptoms, right? Now, it says, during the intake assessment, you always want to note where you are in the treatment process. And I tell you guys all the time, termination, um, discharge planning, treatment planning, you need to know where you are and what skills you should be using and how to apply them. Now, this kid is guarded. He's reluctant to share information, but eventually admits to using marijuana daily for the past year, right? The social worker suspects that Jay may also be struggling with depression. What should the social worker do first? Now, again, we have B, assess Jay for depression and substance abuse and develop a treatment plan based on the results. <laughs> C, refer J for counseling services and substance abuse treatment. Now, based on what I just told you, what would you pick? I'm going to pick C. I pick C too. C, yes. Um, because I'm picking C because you already kind of assessed the situation, even though he is guarded. Um, and I think you went and developed a treatment plan on the first visit. Okay. Is that everybody before I say anything else? Don't and when I think about the community health center, I don't think that 
that social worker will be able to, uh, you know, do the the drug treatment for the marijuana and the depression? Right. I think so too. And I think they probably will refer him out to counseling because, um, because of the substance problem. This is getting quite interesting. So let's break down the answers. Thank you guys for sharing. I see people in the chat. <laughs> Somebody said they stuck. So let's break it down. Again, it's application. Now, of course, yes, the setting is a community health clinic, right? And you have your social worker and the mother comes in with them. We went through the symptoms already, so I'm not going to go back to that. Urine intake. Keyword here was assess. You would not refer him out. Remember, it says first, it's an intake. He's This kid is reluctant to share information, but he's starting to tell you things. So assessing Jay for depression, substance abuse, and developing a treatment plan based on the results, the social worker's first step should be to assess Jay both for his depressive symptoms and substance use. The social worker explores a history of symptoms, duration, and asks about other factors such as family history, environmental factors. It's essential that we identify and diagnose both conditions to develop an appropriate treatment plan. He has what we call possibly dual diagnosis or co-occurring diagnosis. It's no longer called dual diagnosis. It wasn't a DSM-4, it's co-occurring, which means he has both a clinical diagnosis, and then there's substance use. We have to treat both. You would never refer somebody out just first meeting them. You need to assess them first. So Angel says substance use will be out of scope. That's why it needs to be referred out. Nope, you wouldn't refer out. (laughs) You would not refer out. You need to assess them first. Assess, 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 Angel. It's based off the fact that you're in intake. And it says, what would be the first thing you should do? Okay, you're the social worker. So you have the clinical skill set to do so. You would not do refer yet. Not yet. You need to first assess him. We don't know how long he's been having it. We don't know the duration. We don't know the precipitating factor. We need to do that first. Angel says she should have stuck with her first answer. Mm Mm-hmm. See? See? This is a lot of what you're going to see on the test. I don't care if it's bachelor's, master's, or clinical. This is an application question. You have to be able to differentiate what the assessment steps are and really look at what they're asking you. Shayla says she got it right. You got to look at, you better have got it right, Shayla, all the coaching we've been doing. Uh, (laughs) But yes, you have to assess. Yeah, and Shayla's exactly right. My star people, (laughs) assess before you act. You got to assess first. You would never refer that kid out. It's too early. They gave you where you are in the process. Okay? Remember that. All righty. Y'all got tripped up by the AI question. Okay. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do another one. I still got about 15 minutes. So I'm be, be nice to y'all. I'm gonna give y'all another one and see how y'all do. Any comments about that one? Why I put the next one in the chat? Y'all got quiet. Some of y'all got tricked up. Was that a little tricky? No. Well, I know you you good, but some people were like, huh? A little tricked up. But remember, always look at how old your client is. Look at what they came in with. This is a clinical question. So you're getting all his symptoms, but you don't have anything else. So be very wary of that. Don't be so quick to jump to action steps. All right. Putting in the next one. So, sir, I do have a question. Um, 
at the end of the answer on B. So once we do the assessment for depression um, to determine is he depressed or is it because of the substance abuse? So we would develop a plan there and then re refer out or how because of the setting. Well, you're looking at the setting, but the 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 settings there. But sometimes the setting has nothing to do with what they're asking you for. You okay. guys are adding things to the question. That was part okay. of the problem. The setting really had nothing to do with it. They were. T this is an application question. You know what they were testing? They were testing what you know and what you would apply in the assessment process. If you know the assessment process, then you should be thinking about what skills you should be using at that time. That's where the application piece, that's what makes the test so hard. It's the application questions. You cannot memorize this stuff. You can't. You have to be able to apply it and you have to be able to not only understand it, but you got to apply it to the person in the scenario. That's a lot of what I taught Shayla, right, Shayla? <laughs> That's what she got the question right. So, yeah, yep, I drilled in her to her brain. We did that for an hour in, the, in late evenings. You really have to make sure you understand that, um, how these questions are built. They're always testing underlying developmental concepts. And if you don't have the right material, if you don't know your learning style, you're going to struggle. And I think I've done this long enough after 300 social workers to, to note that now. So be very careful when you're reading these application questions. You have to know how to break them down. You have to know and be able to apply those theoretical concepts. So here's our next one. Here we go, y'all. And just because y'all being so nice and I got some time, I might just add one more. We'll see. All right, so here's the next one. What is the first principle of human behavior and social work practice? We have A, the biological and genetic makeup of a person determines their behavior. B, environmental factors such as family, society, and culture shape behavior. C, behavior is solely the result of an individual's choice and responsibility. Okay, this is good because this is actually recall and application together. All right, so let's start with A. Are we keeping it or do we throw it out? What are we doing? Come on, y'all. Keep it. If she says keep it. Anybody else read A? Going once, going twice? Keep it. All right. B. I would say, hmm. yeah, keep B. B? Yeah, I think keep B. I think B is more like mm -hmm. environment change for us. Yeah. C was behavior solely the result of individual choice and responsibility. Can we throw it out or do we keep it? Throw it out. Yeah. Throw, it throw it out. Cool. Now we're between two. Is it A or is it B? Let me check the chat while I'm in here. I see a lot more A's and B's. Y'all ready for the answer? Done with the torture? Yes. <laughs> A is out. A is gone. It's B. It is yeah. B. No. It is B, B, B. Sorry, Tiff. <laughs> All right. Let's go through why. All right. So the correct answer is B. Environmental factors such as family, society, and cultural shape behavior. This is the first principle of human behavior and social work practice. Social workers must recognize that individuals are influenced by various factors in their environment, including their family, their community, and cultural background. By understanding the impact of these environmental factors, social workers can develop interventions that support individuals to develop strengths, heal from trauma, and achieve their goals. Option A ignores the influence of their environmental factors on behavior, right? 
Option C places undue emphasis on individual choice and overlooks the role of systemic factors. Okay. Yes, Shanda, I think that's how you say your name. Person and environment is what first came to mind. Yes. Hi. I love it. I love it. See? Tiff says, why? <laughs> yeah, she says she gets it now. Person and environment. Now you see, you see how application works. Need to review things. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to put the last one in there for the night, folks. Just because I got a couple of minutes, I'm going to give you guys one more for the row. Shonda. Oh, my bad. She says, <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you for correcting me, girl. All right. So let's see. All right, refrain from check real quick. You guys, I'm going to put the last one of the night in here as fast as I can. It's a really quick one. And I'll put it in here. Just give me a second. It's one of your favorites. It's Eric Erickson, Psychosocial Theory. You guys will love it. All right, let's see. Give me a second. Okay, you guys should see it, start seeing it in the chat pop up. Hold on. Put the answers in. But don't write anything in it, though. Here we go. According to Eric Erickson's psychosocial theory, what is the primary developmental task during adolescence? We have A, intimacy versus isolation. We have B, identity versus role confusion. We have C, generativity versus stagnation. And we have D, ego, integrity versus despair. Now, this is a recall question. This is, should be easy for y'all. What is the answer? I don't, I'm not even going to go through the answer choice in a moment. Y'all should know this. The answer is B. Um, B as in boy. B. 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 Is that everybody? Okay, I think I said everybody. Yes, that is correct. 